Hey, what's up guys? So in this video, I want to show you how to find the Fibonacci sequence in C++ using recursive function. So as you might know, Fibonacci sequence, all it means is just the first term added to the next one. For example, the, the, we start with 0 and 1, so we have to add 0 plus 1. We get 1, then we add 1 plus 1, we get 2, and we add 2 plus 1, we get 3, and so on. It's just like a bunch of series of numbers added one after the other one, like term 1 plus term 2. So in this video, I'm going to show you how to find those t sequences, whatever term you want, uh, using recursive function. So to do that, we're going to have a separate function, and this function is going to return integer because, well, you add numbers and it gives you integer, so we're going to return integer. So we're going to do integer, and we're going to call it fib, and I'm going to pass three things as a parameter. So the first thing is we need to define how deep we want to go into the function. We need to tell how many terms we will, how many, which term are we looking for because let's say we're looking for 10 levels deep, so that's going to be our target. So we're going to do int target. We need to define which term are we looking for, otherwise it can go forever, you know, if you let it go. So that's our first thing. The next thing is we're going to pass another integer and we're going to call term 1. And the next one is int term 2. So we're passing those two things. Term 1 and term 2, we're going to add them. So when we call the recursive function again, now term 2 becomes term 1. And term 2, the actual term 2 becomes term 1 plus term 2. So it will make more sense if I show you by writing it. So I'm going to do int fib. Oh, let me just copy that actually. So we're going to open curly brackets. So the very first thing that you want to do, we want to display our current term. And in all cases, the current term is going to be term 1. We're just going to add space in between. So the next thing that is important, remember you're looking for some kind of, some defined level deep, and that number of levels is your target. So we need to check if our target reached 0. That means we need to stop at that level. We, want, we don't want to go further. So that check is pretty simple because you just check if target equals zero because every time when we call the recursive function we're gonna subtract one from the target so if our target level is five it's gonna be five four three and so on until it reaches zero and when it gets to zero we're gonna return we're gonna return our last term and we're gonna stop recursive function from calling itself so what we're gonna return is Remember, Fibonacci sequence, sequence is term 1 plus term 2. So else, if the target is not 0, what do you want to do? You want to call the Fibonacci function again? Now, the first thing you need to pass the target. And remember, every time when you call the recursive function, target, you need to subtract 1 from the target. So now, my term 1 becomes term 2. 2 and my new term 2 becomes term 1 plus term 2. I'm going to close it. So I can call this function in my main and I'm going to display one more time. And all right, I, I need to pass my levels. So let's say I'm looking for Fibonacci sequence that is 20 levels deep. So I'm going to do 20. And remember, when you just call the Fibonacci fun function at the beginning, Term 1 and term 2 are known. By default, the term 1 has to be 0 and term 2 has to be 1 because your number starts from 0 and 1. All right, so let's call this function and let's see if it works. All right, as you can see, we, term 1 is 0, term 2 is 1. So we take 0 and 1, we add them, we get 1. Then we add 1 plus 1 we get 2, then we add 1 plus 2, 2 plus 3, 3 plus 5, and so on. So it gives the sum of two terms, of two previous terms, 
every time when you go to the next level deep. So another thing I want to set, mention, if you're looking for Fibonacci that is maybe 200 levels deep, your integer won't be able to store the number that is that big. So you will need to use long, long, or you need to make your integer unsigned. Uh, all right, so that's pretty much it. In this lesson, we covered how to find Fibonacci sequence using recursive function in C++. Thank you very much for watching.